Larry, let's put this on a, on a personal level. As far as the incidence of AIDS and, and, and Kaposi sarcoma, I, I know that it's high, but from your personal experience, is it really that high? In other words, how many people do you know? How, how frequent is it in your, in your experience? Uh, I have lost a dozen friends already in the last year and a half, two years, 12 to 15 friends dead. I have another 15, 20 who have been diagnosed and are under treatment and a good six or seven who are in intensive care units and hospitals or are in hospitals currently, right now. In the gay That's a lot. Yeah. In, in the gay community, uh, what is the word that is accurate to describe uh, <clears throat> the reaction to all of this? I don't know if there's one word. I think anybody who's got any brains is nervous and scared uh, and concerned. Uh, we were looking for some kind of an analogy, and someone came up with, it's like being in a foxhole, and you don't know when you're going to get shot down next, who's going to be it. And I think a lot of us feel that way. We don't know what's causing all of this, and somehow so many of your own personal friends, why is it that we know so many of them? There must be a million gay people in the New York City area. Of the 350 some cases, why do we know so many of the people? It's it's a, a great medical puzzle. What have you been able to do for the community? To well, a bunch of us started something called Gay Men's Health Crisis, which has now grown to a group of about 100 and 150 volunteers. Oh, we've done everything. We've got absolutely no support from any government agency, from any city agency. We've done it all ourselves. We've raised about $100,000. We've given $50,000 of that away to research. We've put uh, about 15,000 copies of that newsletter I showed you out to the public. It is the single most thorough piece of information that has been put out by anyone on all of AIDS. It has a complete bibliography. It has uh, symptoms. It has a whole complete list of doctors in the New York City area. We're running support groups for patients. We are training doctors how to deal with people who may have life-threatening diseases. We've had to do that ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have support groups for the patients. We have arranged individual therapy for the patients. We are visiting patients in the hospital. We are putting dying patients together with their families whom they haven't seen in a number of years who, who perhaps didn't even know they were gay. Uh, we have a hotline which we train volunteers to man, which is fielding anywhere from 25 to 50 calls a day from all over America, people, and these are not crank calls, these are calls from people who are saying, I'm concerned, I've got these kind of symptoms, I don't know what to do, I don't have a gay doctor, I don't have a doctor who's sympathetic, I don't have a doctor who knows about AIDS. Uh, it's, it's just a, a, we don't feel we're doing anything because it's, we're plugging up holes all the time. and, and the, the 25 of us who are perhaps most active in all of this, I mean, forget that we've got jobs. Uh, our president, who's, a, who's a, a, a major executive of a major corporation, I don't know how he keeps his job, because I know how often I have to speak to him every day. I'm a writer. I'm self-employed. I can put that aside for a while. But I know that I am on the phone every day and that I am going to a meeting every night. We're training people to do this. We are having uh, consultants come. We're having experts on this, all of that. Somehow I think that, that, uh, that you're... Uh, the community here is, is more than nervous. You try not to think about it. You just know that your best friend has died. You just know that a person you had a love affair with is in Lenox Hill Hospital with PCP, which has an 80% fatality rate. And you have to do that for him, and you have to do it for the people who are been, who have died or the people who are coming along, and you have to do it in the face of a city that is not giving us any help in terms of social. The mayor is in a newspaper like the New York Times, which if it prints anything on this, will print a, an article this big on page D24. We have to get the information around. It's very hard. I mean, we're putting out a leaflet. We ourselves, this is something that should be, be done by who knows, by the government, by the CDC. We are putting out a leaflet that's going to blanket the whole city, 500,000 copies, that says, guys, until we know better, cool it. Give up your drugs. Lay off the number of people you're having sex with until we know better. Because this, if it is a virus and it is sexually transmitted, it is passing between us. So let's cool it for a while. You know, have as much sex as you want, but with fewer number of people. We're doing this. We are all volunteers. We have medical people on our board. But basically, we are lay people without any help from anyone else, I might say. 
You, uh, you probably answered my next question, which is, <laughs> which is, what is the advice that uh, that you give to people who call? Depends what they want to know. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, is 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 for uh, not people who are already sick, but people who are worried about contracting the disease. Uh, it is not. Let's put it this way: it is a recommendation mm -hmm. that has been put out by a group called the New York Physician for Human Rights, which is an organization of 200 gay doctors mm -hmm. in the city and also in conjunction with the Department of Health. And it is basically very simple. It is saying, we don't know yet what causes AIDS, but until we do, please cut down on the number of different people you are having sex with, particularly with partners who themselves have a large number of different partners. That's for now, until we know better. It's, uh, I get the feeling, just, uh, just talking to a number of, uh, of activists around the country, that it's almost a Damocles kind of a situation. That, uh... Well, activist is the wrong word. The gay political movement, is, if there is such a thing, and I really doubt it, but the, the, what are, the people who are known as the gay politicians mm -hmm. have steered very clear of all of this. It's, a, it's, it's loaded for them because for so many years gay rights has fought for the right to uh, be sexually free mm -hmm. and uh, for suddenly something like this to come out of left field and say uh, if you are going to be sexually free and this is happening in the straight world too with the sexual revolution and herpes uh, there may be some added little uh, bonuses that mm -hmm. you're going to have to put up with so the gay leadership again if there is such a thing and I don't see yeah. it uh, has really steered clear of it the thing about GMHC, our organization, is that none of us is a political person. We are not politically aligned. We're all f concerned gays who were not politically active particularly. Uh, as, I, uh, as I say, I'm a writer, mm -hmm. the, the other corporation executives, investment people, sure. fundraisers, uh, not your usual known gays. And we've done this out of, out of need and desperation. And the only reason we're doing it is because no one else was doing it. The other gay social organizations were not doing it. The gay social workers or the gay mm -hmm. psychiatrists, so they've all banded together now. But initially, no one was doing it. That's why we did it. We jumped in. And unfortunately, uh, we've raised a little antagonism, I'm sorry to say, because we're doing what other thing people should be doing. And we're trying very hard to break down that we should all work together like they can do much more easily in a city like San Francisco, but not in New York, yeah. in New York where everybody is so damn competitive, basically. You're a reasonable and logical, logical person. Uh, <laughs> I got a big mouth and I yell, and I think that that gets a lot more done than being reasonable and logical, quite frankly. Well, the the the, the reason the reason I uh, said that is, if if one uses logic, is there any reason to really believe that AIDS, which clearly has started at least in the gay community, is going to remain there? In other words, if uh, if is there any reason for the other part of the society? A straight society to be complacent, would you figure? I don't think at any time ever for anybody in all of history <laughs> you should be complacent. <laughs> but then I'm Jew that, Jewish and gay. Yeah, so. Would I take it that, that long of a view? <laughs> right. uh, it seems to be hitting the straight community. It's uncertain what part of the straight community, and uh, but according to people who know uh, far better than I in this area, this, it is, is definitely going to hit the straight community. Uh, and it would be very nice if perhaps the straight community uh, were a little concerned about this, if not only for themselves, just in terms of brotherhood mm -hmm. to uh, their brothers who in fact are, uh, their brother human beings who in fact are having a rather tough time of it. Um, but even the gay community itself has not been, uh, outside of New York, uh, we've been the worst hit, as you know. We mm -hmm. have 300 and as of Last, the 22nd, we had 348 cases compared with half of that a year ago, and yeah. we have half of those people are dead in one year, and when, as you know, with two cases occurring every single day. Uh, so we've been the worst hit, and so therefore perhaps we're the best mobilized, but it has happened in cities all over the country, and we have found a complete and utter lack of interest in it on part the, the gay and the medical and the straight communities altogether. What do you think that is? I think it's scary. I think in terms of the straight community, it's because basically it's homophobia, or not even homophobia. I do not think that heterosexuals are interested in homosexuals. I don't think it's homophobia. I just think it's a complete and utter lack of interest, and that's okay. I mean, what can you do? 
uh, but I think in some instances, in the case of the press, like the New York Times, or in cases of, of publications, that is homophobia. It is a conservative, traditional homophobia that says we are not going to run anything on anything concerning gays. I think in terms of the gay community, uh, it's a scary thing. It's a lethal thing, and a lot of people would not like to know about it. We've thought, for instance, that in New York alone, um, you think business would fall off at the baths or at some of what are called backroom bars. Not at all. It's, there seems to be an attitude of, damn the torpedoes, full suite ahead. If I am going to go, I am going to go down fighting. The hell with it. And it's also an understandable attitude. Uh, I can't say that for all the work the gay men's health crisis has done in New York, I cannot say that, that we have done a, that terrific a job because I know, no, let me put it this way, I don't think the gay community in New York has responded. When you think of all of the rich gay men who are in this city, the mm -hmm. famous fashion designers, names on everybody's lips, the famous politicians, the famous uh, people who run brokerage houses mm -hmm. or banks who are gay, who will not give us a penny. We have solicited quite possibly the most successful fashion designer in the entire world and asked him, would he please give us some money? We desperately needed it to fund some research, a specific project. And he said, I can't give you money because if word got out that, uh, that, that I gave money to something gay, my business would be destroyed. Now, what, that's awful that he should feel that way. It's awful that, that he should not have the courage to come out against that. And it's awful that we should have to bear the brunt, the burden of, of that kind of a situation. If there is a, uh, at, at least nervousness, at most alarm in the gay community over this disease, why do you think that uh, that uh, attendance at the bars is not going down and, and well, attendance I at the baths are not going to... I think, as I said, I think it's this, uh, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go fighting, and if, it's a, if I'm going to catch it, I'm going to catch it, and if I, you know, it, it isn't really promiscuity, which is such an awful word that's an, an issue. All you have to do is have sex with that one wrong person, and it could be only the one person, mm -hmm. and that's not promiscuity, that's bad luck. Yeah. Uh, so a person is going to say, to hell with it, I, I, I mean, I, I'm a human being and I want social and physical, emotional and loving contact with another human being, uh, I'm going to go out and do it and if I get it, I get it, and if I don't, I get it, I don't. And, and again, it hasn't been proven that uh, it's the sexually transmissible disease, we just think it is. What if it's a genetic predisposition? Uh, what if it's uh, some, a bad case of drugs that was made three years ago? Or uh, who knows? I mean, there's so many different possibilities that, that haven't really been discounted. What if it's poppers? What if yeah, right, right. all of that? And what if it's a combination of all of these things? And what is the magic uh, recipe mm -hmm. that makes all of that? I don't know. I was going to say, it's a medical mystery. And because it's such an incredible mystery, you would think that every newspaper in this country, like Sherlock Holmes, would be following this thing every single day, saying, what is happening? New cases, mystery, mystery, what is causing it? Like with Legionnaire's disease. When Legionnaire's disease came out, it was on the front page, or toxic shock. It was on the front pages of the newspaper, every newspaper across the country, the entire duration of, its, of, uh, of, of what was causing it, because it was a straight thing. We've had more victims than both of those things combined, and, and nine-tenths of the world doesn't even know about us. Including the gay community. Including, well, we're doing, we're working our best, but yes, including the gay community. And without the media, without people like yourself or with the New York Times mm -hmm. and, and uh, Time and Newsweek, which basically have done a good job of covering it, those two, not the New York Times, uh, we have been able to get word around more than, than we can because there is no gay network, unfortunately. Okay. Oh.